Well, ladies and gentlemen, shall we receive Dr. Mark Hamby, please? Hallelujah. There we are. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Whoa. That was something, wasn't it? Let me tell you before you get concerned that you may think, well, they're... The, the, you know, the, there are not too many of us here. I think this is a, a real phenomenal group for Friday night at 9 o'clock. I'm just going to tell you. But that's not the only thing. Did you know that, the, did you know that your, your babies, your children, yourself, you are the result of a fertilized egg? And you started out as a cell. And what happens in a time like this is so important that we do not concern ourselves with those who are not here. You, when you receive the engrafted, fertilized Word of God, you begin to grow. You will grow in and over all these other folks that are not able to be here for many reasons. And you become the remnant seed that causes all of them to be able to come into the same truth. You become holy leaven. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So, What's really fun is that you get to be a part of that first impregnated spiritual word. I'm glad to be with you. I uh, am always so deeply honored. I sometimes look back and wonder how God has connected us and and made it so made it so. Uh, wonderful in our relationship past the bank and what's going on <laughs> was he he's dodging and going he's he's headed for a higher branch he's headed for a higher branch <laughs> and uh sweet rose of sharon i love you sweetheart you all are so special i don't know you probably don't even know maybe you do last week pastor made a special trip all the way to Toronto, Canada. I was speaking up there and uh, he and two of my other sons came in, flew in to spend a day with me, to talk with me, to give me uh, direction, to give me counsel. We have established an apostolic council. You know, I've got, somebody's been telling me I gotta quit running all over the world but I won't quit coming here yeah. <laughs> I want the right to come here so pastor would you tell the other 11 that I want I can come here anytime I want to <laughs> it was such a high honor that uh, and I don't I don't think there's any question in your heart in your mind uh, about your love and your appreciation and your deep deep respect and honor to Pastor Bank and Lady Sharon and what they mean in this house. <clears throat> I want to say one more thing to you and I want you just to let this sink into your spirit. <clears throat> As we progress into kingdom understanding, we don't just go vertically, but we are constantly going up. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the hill of our God. The Bible says the house of the Lord shall be established above the hills in the top of the mountains. Many will come and say, let us go up. Let's say that. Let us go up. Say it with me. And so when that happens, what happens is as you grow, you push your leadership up as well. And there comes a time where greater 
vision, greater understanding, greater apostolic authority comes on that which is moved up. And so things down here change. Things change. Sometimes leadership changes or the manner in which leadership operates changes. And so if we're in a certain frame of mind, and I want to talk about that, I want to talk about your frame, let's all say frame, frame. of mind. I want to talk about your frame of mind or how your mind is framed, how your mind works, okay? I want to talk about that, and I know uh, you probably would love to have some deep revelation. We'll probably get there, but uh, right now, it's really important that we all have a proper frame of mind, because if we grow, how many of you have children? Let me see your hands. You have children. Uh, how many of you said, I just can't believe he's outgrown his shoes? How many of you said, Man, these, these britches, they won't fit him anymore. Huh? Or look, look at that. She can't get in that dress. Why? Come on, let's all say growing. See, but in the spirit, we don't think like that. But the truth is that things have to change. We have to reclothe ourselves. We have to, re, we have to redefine how we walk, where we walk, what we walk in, how we function. We have to redefine that. Now, let me tell you when things never have to change and everything remains always that is in leadership is when you don't grow. If you don't grow, then you can all grow old together and marry each other, bury each other, and just live to the grave and it's okay. But the kingdom of God doesn't function that way. God elevates. He elevates his people and in leadership as you grow it pushes the leadership up up into another place and sometimes when congregations of people are not in a proper spiritual frame of mind let's all say frame of mind we're not in a proper spiritual frame of mind then we start saying well I don't like it this way I liked it better the other way I think it should be so what we really try to do is get on we try to clothe ourselves with things that won't fit us anymore does that make any sense? Okay. I want you to uh, think about this with me. Can you, see, can you see that board from over there? Maybe I'll twist it just a little bit this way. Just, just, just a little bit. Oh, right there. That. What happened to that corner down there? No, it's okay. I'm just tormenting them. No, it's fine. It's fine. All right. <laughs> All of us human beings, you know what a human being is? Being human. Just so you know. Let's all say human beings are just being human. Yeah. All of us human beings have, are supposed to have. I better put my glasses on. See what... Have a brain. Let's all say brain. brain. Oh, we're supposed to have a brain. <laughs> okay? Now, this is important. I know you probably don't think this is important, but I'm just going to relax tonight and tell you things that go through my spirit as I meditate. Okay? Let's all say we have a brain. We have a brain. And in that brain, we have a mind. Let's all say mind. Now, what's it? see, there are some folks who have a brain. They're in a coma. They have no mind. Okay? So we have a brain, and in that brain we have a mind, which means we have a capacity to think. But it's possible for someone to be alive for a long, long time with a brain but can't think. There are some people who are born with a brain, but they can't think. Follow me here. Just nod at me once in a while or something. Just, you know, I don't expect you to jump up on the chair or anything, but you know, just let me know you're here. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, let's get this in sequence, okay? Everybody has a brain. In that brain, we have a mind. 
in that mind we have thought. Okay? And with the power of thought, we have the power of reason. Let's all say reason. See, I'm an old woodsman. I'm an old hunter. A deer has a brain. But they say a deer can't reason. I'm not sure about that. And the reason I'm not sure about that is because I'm a wily old hunter and I've seen them reason. I've seen those rascals figure out how to get away and get around. You know what I'm saying? And isn't it amazing too that elephants, for example, when one of them passes away, they'll all come back and they'll smell the body. And sometimes for days they'll walk around grieving, grieving. Even an elephant, let's say even an elephant. Yeah, and they'll go back year after year after year to old bones. And they'll pick old bones up from their ancestors and smell them and pick them up. They make trips, sometimes hundreds of miles, to go and smell the bones of some of those. Wow, what is that? Well, it's one thing you have a brain. Then if you have a mind, then you have thought, then you have reason. Now, down here, if all of this is functioning, then something else happens. We get down deeper and we have a will. Now I have a will. That means I make decisions about what I do and do not want. What I will and will not do. Where I will and will not go. Will. But see, it's way down in here. It's way down here. See? You follow me so far? This is where the inner sanctum, this is, you know, we always say, out of the bottom of my heart. Well, what you're saying is deeper than this, deeper than this, deeper than this, and deeper than this. Down here somewhere, I have, because down here, I have to make conscious decisions against my will and thy will this is where I start determining the next thing because out of the will is always an agenda I want you to think about that for a minute an agenda and out of that agenda comes my life or my activity what I do how I manifest these are seven steps in the inner core of me now, this is probably not very interesting to you at this point but I'd like for you to think through this with me just for a minute because this is where Jesus in the garden says, not my, but will be done. It is here that we gain spiritual understanding. Remember when Jesus made the statement when he was speaking to his, his disciples and people around him, he said, let these things sink down into your ears. Anybody remember that scripture? Let these things sink down into your ears. What he's saying is it's got to go deeper than your brain. It's got to go deeper than your mind. It's got to go deeper than thought and deeper than reason. See, the men on the road to Emmaus, as they walked, they were sad and they reasoned together so they're all up in here in the soulish nature all up in here everything is operating out of their head everything's operating out of their thought out of their feeling out of their human emotion because when you get down here then when you drop down into the will there's sorrow there's sadness there's loneliness there's brokenness there's all of these feelings and so what's manifesting as they walk they are sad so they're manifesting something that comes down through this whole process. But when it gets down to here, they do not understand 
And these are his disciples. They do not understand, even though he told them, on the third day, I will rise again. So they got this, but they did not get that. The reason I'm doing that is because I have been studying recently. I think, Pastor, what happened through all the years, before I go, before I go away, before God takes me, I have asked the Lord why in the congregation, in what I call the corporate gathering, you know, we deal with our, we deal with our spirits one-on-one, -on -one, but why do we gather together? Why do we come together? Why do we, and David said, I will praise him in the great congregation. When you come together, the scripture says, one hath a psalm, one hath an hymn, one hath a prophecy. Everything should be done for edifying. But why do we come together? And the reason for that is that there was a time a few years ago that I almost despaired. I got to the point where I thought, why should I go preach to these places? I go into these houses where there are hundreds, sometimes even thousands of people, and you preach a sermon. You preach a message, and the people are like, Whoosh, wow, mm, praise God. And they walk back out the door, and you come back next year, and they're just like they were. Nothing changed. Nothing, you follow what I'm saying? Nothing happened. Now, maybe this is my problem and not yours. Maybe this is something that I should not even address with you. But see, I have with my ministry sons and daughters and with those that God has connected me to, I have this enormous desire to see how to break out of common religious activity and into kingdom destiny. I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm just not satisfied doing this. You say, well, but we worship and we feel good, but that's the problem. That's part of the problems because if I don't find, if I don't get over here on the other side of this, then my, then I have to consider, and that's right here, why do I go to church, quote unquote? We know we are the church, but why do, here, what's my agenda? Is it a spiritual agenda? How does it work out in my life, in my lifestyle, in my activity? What do I do as a result? Are you following me? So, while this may not be extremely important to you at this moment, I'm going to make it important because I'm going to talk about it all night. Okay? Okay, I'm just going to talk about it until you start thinking with me in a deeper sense. I have a feeling often. See, I was in here a while ago. I was in here with you. I felt the waves hit in here. Boom. You feel those great spiritual waves where you just, you just feel like you can't, you just got to get out and walk around or do something. You, you know, you, you just can't hardly stand there. You know, how, how many of you understand what I'm saying? What was that? Well, we say, well, it's the glory of God. Where did it come from? Not only that, but what do we do with it? And when we go home, where is it? Does it just evaporate? Does it just appear? And then... See, you don't feel right now this, that enormous, let's all say, feeling. See, the feeling that you had was that the Spirit of the Lord comes down past your brain, past your mind, past your thoughts past your reason, and down here in your heart of hearts, out of the abundance of the heart, you moved over to a side over here, out of this side over here. Well, I'm in church tonight because I really need to be here. And I, you know, I really want to praise the Lord. The toda, I will to praise. I will, I command my soul to, ble to move over there. I command this side of me to get over on that side of me. And once you move over there, all of a sudden something else starts happening, even if you can't explain it. You start feeling like, whoo, hey, what is that? Well, that is the place that God begins to do and to operate in his eternal 
destiny and manifestation. But it's not just to make you feel different. That's the whole, that's what I'm getting at because normally in my experience through all the years, the church worships until they start feeling so good and you just reach that great, glorious spiritual climax. It's just like, whoo, hallelujah, praise his holy name. What a, oh, Jesus. I, whew, oh, I feel like just falling over on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And, and, it's, and then once that's done, we, we snap the lights back up to bright and say, okay, now we're going to receive our offering for this evening. And then... Uh, we're going to preach for a while. And the whole feeling changes. Come on now. Anybody feel in here like you just want to jump up and run right now? No. You say, well, I thought, well, God was here earlier. No, no, he's been here the whole time. It wasn't what God was doing. It wasn't whether he was here or not here. It was whether or not I have moved from this side over to this side. If I'm on that side, then I can be still and know that he is God. I don't have to have that. See, because what's happening, the feeling that you're having is that not just something is happening to you, but something is happening through you. If we understood that there is a generation of something, something is being produced. I preached here a long time ago about the glory of God that the glory doesn't just come flying out of the sky somewhere. No, we are the glory producers. Remember how we talked about between the faces of the, something mighty happens. I turned around a while ago and just happened the pastor and I were facing each other and it's like, whoa, you know, what's that? The cherubim, it is a motion of the heavenly. It is that spiritual thing manifesting in the earth. Okay? Now, what we're really hungry for is a manifestation of the presence. We say, ooh, his presence is here. Whew. Well, what really is here is his glory. The glory came out of you. That's why you were singing and saying how great he is, what great majesty, this awesome thing that's going on. And God always is in his glory. Yes. Can I say God is in his glory? So you think you've got the presence of God there, but what you really did was create an atmosphere in which God abides. He dwells in the praises of Israel. Come on, say he dwells. That doesn't mean he visits. He dwells. What does it mean to dwell? If you have a dwelling, it's your home, isn't it? It's where you go. It's where you can go and lock the door. You can eat there. You can go sit on the couch. You can watch TV there. You can go to bed there. You can get up. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your home. Say it's your home. He does not come and visit you. God did not visit this service. He was here because you were here. You say, we want to go and just, we want God to come. No, no, no. What you do is you go create the atmosphere, and wherever the atmosphere is created, he is there. The Spirit of the Lord was present to heal the sick. Am I making any sense to you? Now, you know what I'm doing here? I'm trying, you know, here a while back I was speaking, and I was talking like this. People want me to go into a deep revelation or something. But you know, I think sometimes we need to just talk about the, we just need to see if we can figure out what we're doing. If I can figure out what I'm doing. Well, was it good? Yeah. Was it right in here tonight? Yes. Come on, say yes. yes. No, come on, say yes. yes. It was awesome in here. Man, how long could we stay in that? All night, right, all night. Why do we do it? So we can feel this all night? See, that's the question. What is supposed to be the agenda and the activity that comes out of what we do? Do we do it so that we can stay here? <clears throat> and then when I go out of this building, my agenda comes over from here. Or does it still come from here? 
And my life or my activity, is it a result of here or here? You know what the whole difference is? Are you ready? Vision. That's why without a vision, the people perish. The people perish. You would say, oh, the lost. No, 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 not the lost. God's people perish. They perish in what? They perish in their possibility for discovering the secret things that he has hidden for them from before the foundation of the world. They, they are not able to ever move into a full disclosure of their identity and of their destiny because they always go back to do the same thing and come to up with the same result. And that is that after I've worshipped and after I feel so good and I feel so clean inside and I, whew, hallelujah, and I just know that Jesus loves me and, you know, I've got my fix for the week, my Holy Ghost fix, and now I can go back home. But once I walk out the door and get in the car, boom. Now, let's see, my agenda has not really been altered Am I making any sense to you? My lifestyle is still coming out of my soul instead of out of my spirit. And the reason is, is because I do not see and I do not hear. Now this is why when Jesus was talking and he was talking about the sower sowing seed and all, remember all of that? And then the disciples when he finally got through with all of that, they went into the house. And when they went into the house, they said, hey, tell us this. T why do you always speak in parables? Let's all say parables. See, that's why I'm talking to you tonight in parables. I'm talking, I'm what is a parable? Well, you would say, well, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. No, what a parable really is, is a, it's a picture, a natural picture that depicts a, an unseen thing, okay? That's really what a parable is. And that's why in the 78 of Psalms that I will speak in parables and I will discover dark things. What is that all about? Well, that's the things that was hidden from the foundation of the world. When I open my Bible and I look at things and I read this, for example, this people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart. Okay? And then he goes on to say, with their heart, and should be converted. Changed from here to here. Let's all say converted. To, to change over and be converted. And then it says, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see. And blessed are your ears because they hear. Remember when they went into the house, they said, tell us the parable. He said, to you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. To them it is not given to know. And so what First of all, we have to understand is you would not be in this room tonight if God had not ordained, moved through all kinds of various things, caused you through your mama, your daddy, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, your whatever. You, you heard the word, you preached, you heard something on television, saw something, you heard it on the radio, something. I don't know what happened, but somewhere back there, somewhere you got in contact with something, your heart was moved. You're in this building tonight. You're here. You're here. You're here by divine order. Let's all say divine order. God has divinely, you had a desire today or you wouldn't have made the trip. You wouldn't have come here at this hour. You wouldn't be here listening to me right now if there were not some divine order in all of this. To you it is given to know. But there are many that will gather in here in this building and, and what happens is it, all the same word preached, the same word taught, in one building has one effect on some people and a completely different effect on others. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's some people that will say, boy, this is what I'm going to do. What is it about some folks that say, Pastor, if that's what God's telling you, that's what we're going to do. And the other, somebody on the other side of the row will hear say, I don't know if he ought to be doing that or not. Now, what, what just happened? Same word, same idea. 
change takes place. Change starts happening. And there are people that say, listen, if God's speaking, yeah, I concur. I feel that. I feel that. Because if change takes place from here, only the people who are there will align with it. Over on this side, this will always question that. If you don't think so, look at your precious Jesus in the garden where he said, if it be possible, that's coming out of here. If it be possible, let this cup. He knew it could not pass. He came to die. He knew ahead of time he was going to die. He told his disciples he was going to die. Told them how he was going to die. The Son of Man shall be crucified. And yet, when it comes right down to the heart of the matter, he out of this side says, if it be possible when he knew it was not possible because he had a human will. <laughs> and that human will will always question the will of God. And that's why if you're going to grow in the kingdom, there has to be a vision of what's happening on the inside. I just wish I could draw a little heart around this right here. Probably could, but I don't know what it would look like with all this other stuff. Yeah, because as a man thinketh in his, then his agenda and his life, so is he. And so I think I will. I think I'll draw a heart. Because if it doesn't happen here, if this Woo. There you go. Because the agenda and the life is a result of the heart. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now you may not think you have an agenda, but I promise you every human in this world has an agenda. Now we think that's bad. Say, well, that's bad. No, it's just... You just have to have the right agenda. What is your agenda? So well, I just want to do the best I can, take care of my family, I want to love the Lord, serve the Lord. That's right. That's good. That's an agenda. Let's all say that's an agenda. Yeah, then some folks have an agenda say, I, I really want to become an elder. I'm, I hope they'll make me a deacon this year. And then some folks say, well, I don't know. You know, I just think Pastor, Pastor Bank travels too much. No, he hadn't told me anybody said that, but I just know the devil. No, I know the human mind. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, you know, what happens when they find out you're not going to be here? Anybody stay home when they find out Pastor Bank may not be there that week? Does the attendance change at all on the weeks that you know he's overseas? Come on, talk to him. Probably not as much in this house as in others because you've been trained better. But I want to tell you, I used to tell my staff, don't tell anybody I'm out of town. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not announce that Dr. Hamby is in S Somalia. <laughs> and if I'm not there on that Sunday... And they say, when's he going to be back? Say, well, soon. <laughs> Don't tell them I'm going to be gone three Sundays in a row. Or they'll all backslide. <laughs> Do you know why you're laughing? Because you know exactly what I'm saying. Because our human mind attaches itself to human things. And we want that human there. And if he's not there... I don't feel comfortable because I'm working out of my soulish nature. If my spirit was in control, I would say, pastor's not going to be there. I have to be there then. I have to be there even if I'm not feeling well. Why? Well, if he's not there, I've got to be there to add strength. I've got to be there to make sure that, you know, that I fill up anything that may be. How many of you are listening to me? This is not that deep, is it? No, this, but you know what? The, this, is the, this is the malady of the corporate body. The malady of the corporate body is that we get so attached to certain things happening in a certain way. The next thing is, 
can you come into this house and can you have a spiritual happening without music? Can you come into this house and have a spiritual happening without singing for 45 minutes? We can. Do you ever do that? No. Why? Well, say, well, because we want to worship, you know, we want to worship. See, but what happens sometimes is that we become so accustomed to things functioning a certain way that if it doesn't do that way, then we think we can't reach a certain thing in the spirit. I used to purposely walk in on Thursday night. Sometimes our Bible studies would be from 2,500 to 3,000 people in the Bible study. I'd walk in, drop my Bible on the desk and say, everybody stand up. Get your Bible, I'm reading from here. No note on the piano. No, no. I tell all the musicians, come sit on the front row. I want you on the front row so I can see you. I want you up here. I don't want you up here. I don't want you out there dancing around leading worship. You, if you don't get word in, you sit right here, right there, 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 there. Okay, Dave, you sit there. Gary, you sit over there. Okay, got that figured out? Now, here's what I want to say. Boom. I'd preach for two and a half hours. The whole service time when we're used to singing for about 45 minutes or something. No, no. Why? Because I've got to break this. I've got to break that. I've got to teach them that there is not just one certain way that works. The holy God of heaven is here whether you sing or not. See, this is what you've got to understand. We are always in a rut in our thinking. To grow in it. Now, I'll offend somebody here. I know I'm not. You know, you can't, you can't deal with the devil unless you get him to manifest. So I'm always working to get the devil to manifest. Then I can work on it. You say, yes, but I'm a singer, and I don't, hey, I don't care how good you sing. Sometimes you just need to sit down and just, and just say the word of God. Where is God? He's in his word. Can there be any power? Not unless you create an atmosphere. But you think the only atmosphere is created by music, the sound of music, the sound of trumpets, the sound of this and the sound. No, it's out of you. Say out of you. See, and so the corporate body really is not producing as much as they think because they're depending on that to produce something that they can align to. And that's when you prove whether or not there's worship in the house or worship on the stage. Now, the reason I'm telling you these things is because I am stuck right now on glory, honor, and power. I can't help myself. When I go back to this powerful word, Revelation chapter 4, the seraphim are flying. It's the same throne room scene that Isaiah saw in Isaiah 6. Same one. God didn't change thrones. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Where is it? Where's your word? Forever settled. He didn't just change rooms. So the same thing Isaiah saw, the same thing Moses saw. He said, you make everything down there according to the pattern that I showed you in the mount. Well, what did he see? He saw God's glory. Show me thy glory. What did he see? He saw God in his glory. It's the same thing Isaiah saw when he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. Sin come on the throne, high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. The seraphim were flying. Each of them had Six wings, with twain they covered the eyes, with twain they covered the feet, and with twain they did fly. And they cried one to another, holy, holy, holy. Right? Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of your glory. The whole earth is or must be made to be filled with your glory. Remember? And that's when he seeing all of that said, woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He didn't say he had an unclean heart. He just didn't know what to do with his lips. Okay? And then the angel, you know, you know all about it, burned his lips, right? Touched his lips. He said, now your lips are purged. And that's, then that's when God speaks for the first time. He said, whom shall I send and who will go for us? You, you know the interesting thing about that passage? I was looking at that again the other day because when it says these people have ears and can't hear, eyes and can't see. He said, even as Isaiah spoke concerning them when he beheld his glory. 
And so we always stop with, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Hallelujah. Well, maybe I'll read the next verse. And he said, go tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted and be healed. <laughs> then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without habitation and the houses without men and the land utterly desolate and the Lord have removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land but yet in it shall be a tenth. Let's all say a tenth. And so what God really is telling Isaiah is that all those people you're going to go back and talk to, there's only going to be a remnant of those people who are going to be able to hear what you've got to say. And that's what Jesus quoted when he looked at his disciples and said, all these people out here on this hillside, hearing they hear not, seeing they see not. Just like Isaiah said. And that's what I see so often in the corporate gathering. People are there. We speak the word of the Lord. There is a remnant that gets it. And then there are so many that just walk back out as they were. And I said, why is that? Why does that just keep happening, Pastor? And God spoke to me and said, because there is no vision. And I said, what do you mean? They got eyes. They can't see. No, no, no. There's no heart vision. They don't know what they're doing at church. They don't know what's happening when they come together. They don't know the operation of the Spirit. They're singing songs. They're worshiping. They're dancing. They're listening to preaching. They go back out. They don't. That, this is all what this is what they see. They enjoy it. They feel it. They love it. But they have no spiritual understanding of what is going on in the Spirit. Am I making any sense to you at all? So, and this is when God dealt with me and he said, you need to go to these places where you've been preaching for years and years and you need to stop and slow down and see if you can get them to see what's happening in the heavenlies what, while they're doing what they're doing in the earth. Because what we're doing is we're doing something here thinking that we're producing something there when really there's something there that should be reflected here. We got it flipped. We think we're blessing the Lord. We think we are making him feel good. Because we keep saying, he's great, you're great. Let me explain to you, he felt good before you ever got here. You couldn't possibly make him feel better. I'm sorry. See how, but see how that affects us? It's like, what? Yeah, well, then I guess I shouldn't sing. Oh, no, no, you should. But you know who's really being blessed by worship? You. You say, well, I just want to, I want to just glorify him. No, he wants to glorify you. We've got it flipped over. But we don't see that. And because I don't see that, I don't know what really is happening when I'm in this room. I don't know, Pastor. I think I've got them all dead. I think I've killed everybody. Everybody's looking at me like a mule looking at a new gate. You ever see a mule look at a new gate? You put up a new gate, the mule just come up here and stand and go... You can go back two hours later. <laughs> There's another thing. Some folks do not want spiritual understanding. This is why deep calleth unto deep. At the noise of thy water spouts. A water spout is a tornado in water. A water spout is a tornado, but it's in water. A lot of it happens out over the gulf. Okay, what is water? Water is spirit. The like-ass principle. We've talked about that. How many times have we talked about that? 
Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus spake ye of the spirit. Water is spirit. It is a spiral. Say a spiral in the spirit. Spiral, spirit. It's a tornado. It's a, what sets it up? Glory and honor. I talked about this when I was here last time. And I told you I was going to come back and really. But see, here, here's where we've got to work on this. Before we can understand glory, honor equals power. And it does. See, around that throne, these seraphim flying around there in that room, they're crying, holy, holy, holy. It's exactly what Revelation chapter 4, exactly what was happening in Isaiah chapter 6. Okay, exactly what Moses saw. That's why he put the, when he made the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, the cherubim are facing each other. Remember, they're crying one to another. He saw the same thing. And I told you years ago, we need to stop just glorifying God to God, we need to glorify God to each other. There is a difference in the vertical and the horizontal. The horizontal is praise. The vertical is worship. If you don't understand the geometry of praise and worship, you will always have that confused because I praise him to you. I'll do that again. I praise him with you. I praise him. God is great. I'm not saying that to God. I'm saying it to you. God is great and greatly to be praised. What am I doing? Just, oh, got my eyes closed. Well, maybe I'll be singing it to somebody. You say, I'm singing it to Jesus. No, you're not. If you say, you are great. Well, now that's different. Now, you, now you're vertical. You alone are to be worshipped. Now you're vertical. That's worship. Say worship. Worthship, but praise is horizontal. So if you don't understand the difference in praise and worship, you'll get that all confused. You jump back and forth from one thing to another. And that's why we should always praise him and then worship him. That's why usually the beginning of praise and worship is alive. I had so much fun tonight with these Jamaican songs. Because years ago, I spent so much time in Jamaica. I built churches all over Jamaica. I sent, we built churches in Mandeville and all the way over, you know, from, uh, from Runaway Bay all the way up across uh, Brown Town and all through there. I built churches all over through there. Yeah. And I used to love to go to that when they were singing, you know. Just... Man, I just, oh man, I had the most fun. I'd sit there and just laugh while they were singing. I'd like is is great. It brought back so much to me. The joy. Say the joy. See the joy of the Lord. You say, what's well, my strength? This is the problem. We think that what we produce in here is for us. Remember, I'm praising him, so we're confused. We say, I'm blessing the Lord. I want him to feel good. I want God to be happy this evening. I want God to feel better. He's been lonely all day, and now that I'm here at church... I'm going to tell him how wonderful he is and he just can't wait till I get there to let him know how great he is. Or I flip that over and say, I just could not wait to get to the house of the Lord tonight. I've just been going through all this all day long. I was in traffic two and a half hours today. I had, had to pass five accidents. I finally got home. The kids were screaming. My husband was upset, everything. And I just, I just, but I just want to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I just find this as a covert in the storm. It's just a wonderful shelter in the rain. Praise his holy name. I tell you what, I'm feeling so much better. Talking about that good old way. Woo, woo, Kai. <laughs> How am I doing? Pretty good. Yeah. And so I either think I'm making God happy or God's making me happy and it never dawns on me that there is a spiritual operation that is supposed to be the outcome and is supposed to be the agenda of my being here. Something is supposed to be the result of our being here just beside making God feel better or making me feel better. And that is the question. What is that? Are y'all okay? How long do we go here? I know, yeah, I know, but we don't want to just, I don't want to kill you totally dead. 
but I'm going to purposely talk about everything from brains to whatever. Let's all say we have a brain. In our brain we have mind. In our mind we have thought. In thought we have reason. That means we can start deciding. And if you don't think so, what were you thinking tonight? Now see, am I going to leave, am I going to leave at 8.30 or am I going to wait till quarter to nine? Who were you talking to? Yourself. So I said to myself, self? What time are me and you going to go to church? And then people say, I never heard the voice of God. No, that's because you're always busy talking to yourself. He said, well, God doesn't speak to me. Well, why do you expect him to speak to you any differently than you speak to yourself? So you think if there's not an outward voice that there's nobody talking. You're talking all the time. Your brain never stops talking. You're reasoning every minute. Man, I just can't wait to get out of here. I've got 10 more minutes. <sighs> and I can punch the card and I'm on my way home. Yeah, and then you're going to sit in traffic for an hour and 45 minutes. In Hotlanta, I can tell you that. Yeah. Who were you talking to when you said 10 more minutes? Self. Oh, I can look at you and say to you what I say to myself. Hey, I was just thinking. What? What what did you say? I was just thinking. Come on, say, I was just thinking. Man, 10 more minutes and we're out of here. What do you think? What do you think? See, I'm thinking. Are you thinking? And in between my thinking and your thinking, we're talking. But I don't even have to talk to think. Because my thought has power. My thought has reason. And in that reason, I have a will. I'm going to tell you, I'm not staying one minute past that 10 minutes. I am out of here. I'm going to be headed home like a Martin to his gourd. I am gone, baby, gone. <laughs> Who you been talking to? Myself. Yeah. I think what I'm trying to help us understand is that all of this is just common. This happens all the time. What doesn't happen in some people is they never are converted. See, and let me get back to, this is really important. It says, it says back here that, that they should, let me, let me just read this again. And they should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. It's not like they've all got leprosy. It's not like they've all got heart disease. The healing that needs to happen is bringing them into spiritual order causing them to be healed of their mind malady, bringing them into an understanding of spiritual things. You understand? To, to heal their disorder. Let's all say disorder. So the healing is their disorder. Their, their, and so I can't do that. The reason why is because, why in the book of Revelation it says, let him that hath an ear. Well, now, you know, I've seen a few folks. I've seen some kids that were born without ears. Did I ever tell you the story about the little boy? He was so presumptuous. He was absolutely, he was a mess. You know. I think they called him Johnny. And he was always saying things he shouldn't say all the time. And so his mother would always say, Johnny, you keep your mouth shut. Don't you be saying anything. Because he would just say, I mean, he just blurt out the truth, you know. You know how kids tell the truth? It's a terrible thing. <laughs> well, the neighbor lady had a new baby. But the baby was born with no ears. This is a parable. Born with no ears. She said, I'm going to go over and see the new baby. And um, Johnny said, I'm going to go with you. She said, no, 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 you stand here. Because she knew if she, he got he had no telling what he would say. <laughs> so you stay in here and said, no, I promise. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I want, I, you, you're going to stay here. No, I want to go, my mama. I promise. I won't say nothing about his ears. I promise. I won't say nothing about his ears. I promise I won't. So they get over there and Johnny's standing there looking at that little baby. Ain't got no ears. <laughs> yeah. 
Mama, you know, neighbor's trying to be kind. Said, oh, look at those beautiful long fingers. My, 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 going to be a piano player. Yeah. Oh, look at those strong little legs. Hey, he's going to play football, isn't he? Look at those beautiful eyes. Perfect eyes. Johnny spoke up and said, you better hope so, because he never will be able to wear glasses. <laughs> But he didn't say nothing about his ear. <laughs> there are just not too many folks in this world don't have ears. <laughs> Except the neighbor lady's baby. That's what I'm <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say here is that when the scripture says, let him that hath an ear, let him hear. <laughs> Let's all say ears to hear. So we're not just hearing natural things. We're not just hearing things that, <laughs> y'all okay? Sorry about that. I just couldn't help it. Poor Johnny was always in trouble. <laughs> So it's possible to have ears but don't hear anything. And that's why in the book of Revelation, let him that hath an ear, let him hear. In other words, revelation, let's all say revelation. See, that's the announcement of revelation. Let him that hath an ear, hear. This is why revelation does not come to everybody in the congregation. They do not all get spiritual revelation. Because they're hearing over here with their natural ears. They're enjoying the natural sensation of the congregational and community gathering. They love church because they have friends and they like social, spiritual things in a nice setting. But they have really no deep desire to have something in their agenda altered so they become something else. And yet that should be the search of all kings. I think I spoke it in here. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out the matter. And that's why Jesus said the dark sayings from before the foundation of the world he's going to make known. But there are people who will have ears that won't hear it, eyes and won't see it because they're not hearing on the other side, on the spiritual side. Deep is calling, but their deep receiver is not operating. It's their human receiver, not their deep receiver. And so their agenda down here, when this all comes out, it comes out in a human agenda rather than a spiritual direction. Okay? So... I think what I'm wanting to do is, and I, 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 we're, not, we're not having service tomorrow, Sunday. I want to talk some more. I want to talk some more about what really is going on in the spirit with glory and honor and power. Let me just write over here on this side something for you all to think about. How long have I been up here, Pastor? How long? Have, huh? Well, it's, it's 10 after 11. What does that mean? It's fine with me. I'm fine. I drank coffee. I'm wide awake. <laughs> Glory. The reason I've got these two things up here is because while the seraphim, each of them flying back in 6 of Isaiah, also in 4 of Revelation, same... They're called the living creatures or in some, in the King James calls them the, the beasts. The, it's just animal because they've got faces, but they're really the seraphim. They're the guardian angels of the throne room of God Almighty. And they're flying. With two they cover the eyes, with two wings they cover the feet, with two they did fly. And they cry one to another, holy, holy, holy. Same thing is happening in, in Revelation 4. Uh, do you follow that? The same thing happened in Revelation 4 that was happening over here in Isaiah 6. Now, 
what is a little bit different in Revelation 4 than in Isaiah 6 is that around that throne, this is not mentioned in Isaiah because they had not gathered yet. There are four and 20 seats. Let's all say four and 20 seats. And they are sitting around the throne of God on a sea of glass. Let's all say a sea of glass. It's the same Greek word. We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. I want you to think, uh, uh, if you just have to have a little picture, let's just say that this is God's throne, high and lifted up, whatever here. And around this throne are 24 chairs. I don't know, but it's all on a sea of glass. The word glass is the same as mirror, say mirror mirror we all with unveiled open unveiled face beholding as in a mirror what am I beholding the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. in other words when I look into the mirror what comes back is not me that not I be seen but that Christ be seen does that make any sense living in me so on the sea of glass, what really is being said there? All right, let's, let's, let's try another one. We are seated with him in heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. This is just a physical picture of our spiritual condition. What is supposed to be happening is we are, and why seated? Why not standing? Why not dancing? Why not, why seated? Because we've entered into the rest of of God because we have entered into his finished work why on a glass why on a mirror because we become the reflection of his glory where in the earth it's the same thing Isaiah saw it's just a different language whom shall I send who will go for us here am I send me where to these people okay on the sea of glass the Bible said there are 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. These are not just all angels. These are the redeemed. So the 4 and 20 is a representative number of all the old and the new and everything put together. Everything that is in Christ gathered together around that throne is to become the reflection of his glory. I'm probably just boring you all completely to death. All this would not be that, probably that, important if it were not that the next line says that those who are seated around the throne they're not saying holy 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 not right at this moment the angels are crying holy 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 they are saying glory honor power to him that sits on the throne let's all say glory, glory. Honor, honor power well wow. so whatever is happening in this holy atmosphere where we're crying holy 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 whatever happens is that when I turn that vertically it's glory honor power and so if I don't understand the spiritual content of glory and the spiritual content of honor this is why we get up and take up an offering for 30 minutes on Sunday morning because we don't understand <laughs> I'm sorry we don't understand the power and the importance of honor. And so we appeal to the human mind every Sunday morning. Everybody, now all of you, get your tie out. Come on, get your envelope. Put your, you should have written the check before you left the house. Or it should have been on your knee while you were worshiping. Nobody should be asking you for tithes. Nobody should be asking you to bring a tenth. It's not just a tithe, it's the tenth. Why? Because it's a part of honor. Honor the Lord with your substance. You say, well, why is that so important? Because if you don't get these two things working together, you have no power. There's no power in your Christianity. There's no power in your life. I don't care how high you jump, and if you sing soprano, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. 
That's why people all around dotted throughout the congregation, they never get it because they're always thinking, oh, the church wants my money. See, because that's, out of, that's coming out of the wrong side of their brain. And what's their agenda? Well, I want to go. I mean, I enjoy church and all of that, but I don't intend to give the preacher all my money. Preacher ain't taking all your money. And if he did, it's none of your business. How's that? No, what, you, what you're not doing, you don't understand that glory and honor only come out of spiritual agenda. It's only spiritual things that create glory and honor. You can sing the song, but there's no power in you. You can say the words, but there's nothing really happening. You don't think I'm upset with you, do you? No, 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 no. Y'all are awesome. I'm telling you because I think you have ears to hear. I, there's no use for me to go. A lot of, there's a bunch of places I go. I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't even bother to talk about this. They're already dead, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. <laughs> Their branches to be gathered and burned. Sorry. No use to dig around their root system because they're already dead. Cut it down while it cumbereth at the ground. <laughs> okay, I promise I'm going to be done here in just a minute. But this is important. Maybe I should alliterate a little bit. That would help you. And I'll come back Sunday and I'm going to, start, I'm going to come back and I'm going to work on this part over here. But I want to tell you, Revelation. Let's all say revelation. revelation. And what is revelation? It is the, it is revelation to you is forward motion toward your spiritual identity. Who you are and who you were before the foundation of the world. Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. None of the, and ordained you. Now wait a minute. You say, well, I knew you were going to be born. No, 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 no. I knew you. That means I knew everything about you, knew your life, knew your, knew, even knew your failure, knew that you would have a problem, knew you'd have a mistake, and even with all of that, ordained you that you would be a prophet to the nations. Whoa, when? Before you, before you were ever in time, before there was world. And I can go back and talk about cosmos. I understand all that. It didn't say before the earth. It said before the world, the cosmos. I, I can get into all that stuff with you if that's what you really want to do. But you just need to start and think before you were born, before you were conceived, before you were formed in your mother's womb, before you were born, God already knew you. He already had an agenda. He had an agenda. Say, he had an agenda. No, no, come on. Say, he had an agenda. That's my, my destiny is God's agenda. I think I'll do that again. My destiny is God's agenda for my life. My will is my agenda for my life. Jesus himself had to say, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm telling you, this is the conversion. Lest they be converted. Converted what? From here to here. That's where revelation begins. Deep calls to deep, but it will never call to the human will. Deep never gets a response from the human will. Deep only gets a response from the spirit will, the will of the spirit. So really one thing that's supposed to happen when I come into a corporate gathering is my heart is supposed to start being changed. Come on, say my heart is being changed. My mind should be being changed. Come on, say my mind should be being changed. I should be converting over from the old thought on the job, on the work, with the kids, on the, at the house. A lot of things I've got to do. But I need to convert. I need to convert over. I need to let everything that's happening to me now come out of the spiritual side of me over here. Am I making any sense to you? <clears throat> yeah. And then, I know I've talked to you about this before, but this is what we don't understand. That only 2% of what's produced in this house 
is necessary for you to be converted, for you to have revelation, for you to be healed, for you to be delivered, for you to be set free. You are in here like a powerhouse producing something and not for yourself. It's only a small amount of what is produced in that wave that came in here a while ago. It doesn't take a whole lot of that to heal you. You say, well, if we can get enough glory in here. No, 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 there's plenty of glory in here to heal your body, heal your mind, heal your spirit, heal your kids and save your husband, you know. <laughs> yeah, or your wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. But two things have to happen. Glory and honor and equals power. Power is authority. Power is favor. Okay. And power is supernatural beyond your ability it takes you beyond your ability and it covers your gift grace according to the measure of the gift and that's when I need to talk to you about the fact that again about vi invisible things are quantifiable you can literally measure invisible things faith for example it can be oh you have little faith or woman great is thy faith it can be little faith or great faith right Great peace have they that love that. It can be great peace or it can be a little bit of peace. So things that are invisible also can be quantified or have, have measurement. And so, so does glory and honor. Let me see if I can just real quickly here alliterate this honor. I honor the Lord with my spirit. And that means I've moved from here to here. I honor the Lord with my substance, my material things, okay? I honor the Lord with my spirit, I honor the Lord with my substance, and I honor the Lord with my seed. My seed shall bless him. Over here in glory, I'll alliterate this too. You know what alliterate means? You use the same, like, spirit. Substance C. I glorify the Lord with my lips. I glorify the Lord with my learning. That means I am seeking a proceeding word of God. I do not consider I know everything. I don't consider I have everything. I am willing to proceed. I am willing to come to him as a child and continue to grow. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? So I really glorify God with my lips. I glorify God with my learning. And I glorify God with my living. And we'll do that another time. One more time. I have a brain. Let's all say I have a brain. In my brain there's a mind. In my mind there's thought. In my thought there is reason. And in my reason I have a will. And this is my heart of hearts. This is where, folks, this is where God, you say, he touched my heart. What did he touch? He messed with your will. Not my will, but thine be done. And out of the will, whether human will or God's will, the human will or the will, say, I just want to be in the will of God. Really? Well, then you're going to have to get out of your will. You're going to have to be converted. And the problem is that we have ears to hear, eyes to see. We can't hear. We can't see. Lest we be converted. The truth is that we just can't get converted unless we can hear and see. So that's why without a vision, the people perish. Because they will constantly produce out of their own will and do their own agenda. Okay, and so what I think we should do is pray a simple prayer. <clears throat> you put in me a will. Do you ever, anybody in here ever have any strong-willed kids? Tell them what to do. I say, hmm, I'm going to do what I want to do. Oh, as a parent, you wrestle with that. Mason is 10 years old. I'm ready to kill him. No, I love him most of the time. I want to kill him part of the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I already told you. Brush your teeth. You're not going to school if you don't brush your teeth. I will. Do it. I will. When? After a while. No, now. 
I'm putting on my shoe. I don't care. Get your shoe off. Go brush your teeth. Anybody go through any of this stuff? Such as is common to grandfathers? Yeah. What am I doing? I'm trying to, I'm trying to use my will over his will. I'm trying to bring his will under control to my will so I can teach him so that when he is beyond years, then his will will be framed. His frame of mind will be correct. What I'm hungry to do in the congregations, Pastor, is I want us to change our frame of mind. When I come in this place, what am I feeling? What am I thinking? What did I expect? What do I think is going on? When I'm worshiping, when I'm dancing, when I'm praising God, what am I doing? Am I feeling? I'm feeling. There's no reason we can't feel good. I'm rejoicing. I'm talking about how great it is. That's not bad. But I need vision with that. Something is being produced. When we came just a while ago, I said, what's happening? He said, it's the glory of God. I said, where's it coming from? He said, out of us. I said, right. And I said, you can feel it. It's getting deeper and deeper. And then I said, what are we going to do with it? We kind of looked at each other like, yeah, what are we going to do with it? That's what we'll talk about Sunday. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do? That's all I'll say. What are we going to do with it? I love you all. I hope I didn't bore you to death. Think about it. <laughs> By the way, I got a new book. Just out this way. It's called Amaze Us, Oh God. Can't believe Simon and Schuster, Schuster produced it, but they did. They asked me to write a book on the miraculous. But I think, Pastor, I think you're going to get some, right? Oh. We try Three weeks? You've tried for three weeks? This one came out of Walmart. So they, but you can also get them online. You can get them on an e-book. You can do all that. Anyway, and don't forget about the prayer of love. If you don't have that, you really need to have that. Then. Good. Okay, I'm done. Bye. Amen. I, I just want to say, uh, before we leave tonight, you answered some questions for me. You really did. Uh, I was talking to some folks before the service tonight, asking a very specific question as, to, as, opposed to, as opposed to in a congregation. We hear the same message over and over and over and over and over. Some are able to walk in it and others are not. Yeah. I was just talking about that tonight. Wow. Yeah. yeah, just tonight. Really? Moment, just moments before we came in here to the sanctuary. Um, but amen. We'll, go, we'll, we'll really, we'll, Pastor, we'll spend some really great time in these sub areas over here on Sunday, if that's okay. Amen. Yeah. We'll, we'll really get down into some more meat. It'll be more inspiring. Uh, I hope. <laughs> can I tell you all goodbye right now, corporately, with, instead of hugging all of you, so I can go back and sit down? <laughs> I love you. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let, let's just pray one simple prayer tonight. One simple prayer tonight from Psalms 143, verse 10. One very simple prayer, especially when it comes down to this issue of the will. One simple prayer. Psalms 143, verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. Yeah. Thy spirit is right. Lead me, O God, into the land of uprightness. And so, Father God, we receive your word tonight. We thank you that we want to make the conversion from operating out of our own soulish human will into operating out of your own divine will. And so, we are praying that you will teach us, you will guide us, you will speak to us by the power of your spirit to begin to do your will so that indeed you can be glorified on the earth and we can come into the spiritual destiny for which you formed us and so God that's our desire tonight as man of God said earlier we are not concerned about who is not here you have brought us here for a divine operation and it is our prayer tonight that if you begin with us as a remnant and catch us on fire enough we will burn 
and catch others on fire. And so, Lord, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your spirit that will lead, guide, and teach us to do your will. Let thy will be done in us and through us in the mighty, majestic name of your son, Jesus. And so, Lord, as we go home tonight, we thank you that we will not slip out of our own, out of the uh, spiritual agenda, back into our own human agenda. That we will go home in the soberness of that which you've spoken to us. And that we will treasure it, keep it, and let it be a guide to us. Thank you, Father. We honor and we bless you now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.